Hello, welcome to the grid system part two. In this video, we're gonna be looking at placing a piece. In the previous video, we created a grid, we set it up, so there was actually pieces already placed, and then we made them invisible. So we'll be enabling them as we need to when the user clicks on a certain space. So first of all, what we want to do is create a method within the game state header file. It's gonna be void check and place Piece. The reason it's called check and place piece and not just place piece because we're going to be checking if the area that the users clicked, if it's occupied or not. If it's already occupied, then we can't actually place a piece. So that's the checking part and the placing as well, the placing aspect of it. So go to your game state.cpp. Before we implement the check and place piece method, go to where you handle your input. You want to do else if. We're going to do something pretty similar to this. So you can just literally copy and paste this. So if Z is sprite clicked, and the sprite that we're checking for is going to be the grid sprite because that occupies all the grid spaces as well. So if the grid sprite is clicked, then the user is trying to place a piece. So we will just do this check and place piece like so and now we can actually implement that method just down here so what we want to do is void void game state check and place piece and in here we need to create a vector to i so vector to integer touch point and this is well going to be the location that the user has touched this is going to be equal to this underscore data input dot get mouse position and we need to just provide the render window so I'll just do this underscore data window because obviously we need to find out where the user has touched now we're going to do ff float rect grid size equals underscore grid underscore sprite dot get global Oops. it should be grid sprite dot get global bounds so we're just getting the size of the grid now we're going to do sf vector to f and this is going to be gap outside of grid so essentially the gap to the left and to the right of the grid and we just need to calculate this so this will be equal to sf vector 2f let me just hide this so we got a bit more real estate to work with this will be screen width minus the grid size dot width then you want to divide that by two because what we've done here is we've got the difference between the screen size, I mean the screen width, and the actual grid size width. But remember, there's a gap on the left and the right. So if we just want one gap or how much the gap is on each side, we need to divide it by two because it's centered. So we don't have to do any extra calculations. And we just need to do the same for the actual top and bottom gaps. Just need to change this to screen height. And change this to screen height, I mean grid size height as well. But now we're going to do ff vector 2f grid local touch pos equals ff vector 2f and this is going to be touch point dot x minus the gap outside of the grid dot x and it's going to be touch point dot y minus the gap outside of the grid dot y so what we're doing here is we're just working out the actual touch position just relative to the actual grid so we don't care about you know the rest of the screen because if we were to touch in the center of our grid, the actual touch position would have 
the actual gap factor in as well so that's what we're removing because we only care about where in the grid is being clicked not the screen itself so now it's going to do int column and row like so we're going to check which column the user has clicked so first of all we'll check the first column always good to start with the first one and move from there it's going to be grid local touch pause dot x if that's less than grid section grid section size did i oh i i missed one variable out so i'll leave that as it is still need to create grid section size so sf vector 2f grid section size equals sf vector 2f grid size dot width divide by three remember it's a three by three grid so the grid section size is essentially the size of each grid space which is the same size so grid size dot height divided by three so this is how big in each individual space is so we're going to do grid section size dot x so if it's within the first column it'll be less than the actual size itself and then we just assign column equal to one else if grid local touch pause dot x is less than grid section size dot x times by two so if it's less than two thirds it will go into the second column because if it's less than just a third it would have triggered this if statement so the, now we're in the second column and finally we'll just copy and paste this to save some time so if the grid local touch pause is less than the grid size dot width we don't need to do time three because that's what grid size dot width is the column equals three so now we need to do the same for the rows and we can save some time by copying and pasting this and just changing what we need to do so for the grid local touch pause we want to change all of these to y's all of these to y's now for the grid section size we also want to change this to a y again the principle is still the same times in a by ah it shouldn't be timed by two so that would have messed things up this should be height and finally this should be row row and row so now that we have the actual area or the actual space that the user clicked first of all we need to check if it's an empty space if it's not we don't want to do anything if it is we can actually do something so if grid array column minus one remember we're doing minus one because arrays and a lot of things in the computer start at zero so if the if it's on the first row we need to do one minus one to get the first index which will be zero and now we need to do well row minus one if this is equal to the empty piece then we're going to do grid array again we're just going to do column minus one and row minus one so now that we're placing the piece we need to assign the piece into the grid array for later check-in and this is just going to well going to be turn now we're going to do if it's the player piece equals turn then what we need to do is underscore grid pieces column minus one row minus one dot set texture and for the texture we're just going to put this underscore data assets dot get texture well, not get font get texture and for the texture we simply want to do x piece which we've already loaded hence why we don't need to load it we've already loaded it in our asset manager and now we need to do turn equals ai underscore piece like so 
And now what we'll actually do is just copy and paste this, do an else. So if it equals the AI piece, so if the turn is AI, we just need to change this to the circle piece. And now we need to switch back to the player, like so. And the last thing we need to do is actually show or make it visible again. Because remember, they're all visible. They've all just got X's in them initially. But we need to re-enable it. So underscore grid pieces, column minus one, row minus one dot set color. And this is going to be SF color. 255, 255, 255. First three values are RGB. If you set it to 255, it won't modify the color. If you set the final value, it will modify the alpha. 255 is on, zero is off. And we're actually ready to run it now. So if you just run it, make sure we've got no compilation error, which we don't have. Fantastic. And now just wait for it to load up. Got our amazing splash screen. Click play. And now we should be able to just click one of these and place a piece. I'm going to place it here. If you go an X, you should now get a circle. X, circle. Ooh, X is going to win. You might be thinking that we haven't won. And we can't actually place any more pieces. So that is fantastic. That's all working. We don't have any win condition. We don't have any AI or any of that good stuff to make like a functioning game. But we'll be implementing that in the following videos. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. If you want to check out the source code, there will be a link with this video to the GitHub page, which has all the source code from every video in this series. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.